And it was just the whole room full of people who I'd competed with every week for 10 years. And I didn't know them as people. I had my opinions on them. I might not have looked favorably upon them, but I didn't know the first thing about them. And it made it really hard to hate some of these people and to compete <laughs> wholeheartedly against them because they're actually really good people. I'm looking at your, uh, your T-shirt, this uh, solar cutters, and it reminds me that we had a fun story um, in our first conversation about the nature of competition and coopetition in Australia. Many of us are familiar with the rather both the, both the competitive nature of the market, but the jovial nature of Australians in general, very prone to um, to friendliness and travel. And um, I'd love to hear more about what Solar Cutters is, where the name come from, what does it mean for you all, and uh, what can we learn from it? Yeah, it's um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And it, I think it does it does actually talk about you know, Australians more broadly and the way that we see business uh, is that mm. yeah, we want to be successful, but it has to be fun, you know, and especially working mm. in the renewable energy industry. I mean, we're, we're changing the world. We're slinging sunshine every day. We're, we're making the world a better place. Um, and so I think, you know, that's where the solar cutters um, movement really started from. It was just, you know, myself and a couple of mates, Jack and Costa, we're sitting around talking about the fact that, you know, in a lot of ways, the solar industry is a little bit like a secret society. You know, we have our little secret handshakes and our little, you know, we all compete with each other day to day, but it's also like a movement of people all trying to achieve a common goal. Uh, and I made a flippant mm. remark that it's almost like the stone cutters uh, on the Simpsons uh, for those that are Simpsons fans. Um, yeah. I said, maybe we should call it the I solar it. cutters. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I didn't think anything more of it. Um, and then the next week, they sent me a message and they'd already registered the business. They'd registered a trademark. They, they were off and away with this solar cutters thing. I didn't get any credit for it <laughs> um, <laughs> other than other than a little bit of naming um, attribution. But yeah, they, they started this movement called the solar cutters, which was really all about, you know, um, the industry coming together and realizing that, you know, ultimately there's more that what unites us than what divides us. Um and so we started, we had a solar cutters networking event uh, before one of the big conferences in Melbourne. I think we had about 250 people turn up and it was just a whole room full of people who I'd competed with like, every week for 10 years. And I didn't know them as people. I had my opinions on them. I might've had, I might not have looked favorably upon them, but I didn't know the first thing about them. And um, once we all came together and started sharing some of our, you know, um, stories and common um, sort of interests, I realized that these guys and girls, they're just like me. They're just a, they're just a solar business owner going and they're trying to change the world, hopefully employ an apprentice, maybe sponsor their local sporting club. Um, and made it really hard to hate some of these people and to compete <laughs> wholeheartedly against them because they're actually really good people. And so my, my, some of my greatest friendships have come from just catching up with my competitors at Solar Cutter Drinks. And you know, I think the first event, as I said, had about 250 people. And then the manufacturers got on board and said, if you run this again next year, we'll sponsor the event and we'll have an open bar for three or four hours. And uh, the next year we had 750 people turn up. And it's actually turned into a movement where people like myself can help those who are just starting to find their way in this industry with connections and networks and a bit of support. Um, because ultimately, you know, I've always wanted to build a successful business and, and um, you know, be successful enough to pay the wages of my staff and keep growing. But yeah. I think, there is a realization that we also have an obligation to industry. Like the reason that we do this above all else is because we want to make the world a better place. We want to accelerate this energy transition. And it's taken me a little while to get there, Nico. I will admit that I was very immature back in the early days, but I am in a place now where I, um, I think about all of my competitors out there somewhere in Australia now installing megawatts and megawatts of renewable energy and helping to accelerate this transition. I think like that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. And I might have missed that on the odd job or they might have, you know, cast dispersions on me to try and help beat us to a project. But ultimately, we're all out there trying to change the world. And this movement has really helped everyone to understand that greater sense of purpose that we have in this industry. I love that story. And I love the idea that not only is there room for coopetition, but uh, as you said, we're out changing the world, slinging sunshine every day. And this secret society of sorts that you all uh, gave birth to called Solar Cutters humanizes the competition. It humanizes uh, every aspect of it and it allows us to embrace the fact that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And we can choose to have healthy competition 
but we still have to keep our eye on and focus on the standards that we want for an industry so it can be professional, so that it can be respectable, so that it can grow with approval from council, approval from the, the stakeholders um, in, in different parts of the country.